Today, we're going to look at metadata and how not to lose your copyright. Hey everybody, welcome back to the vlog. So today we're going to take a look at metadata and we're going to use Corel's Aftershot Pro 3 to do so. But before I get into it, let's talk about orphan work. What exactly is that? Well, basically orphan work is any video, let's say, or for us photo that the creator cannot be found or the creator cannot be contacted. What that means is that image is now public domain. That also means that anyone can use that image and not have to pay royalties to anyone from that day forward. So we don't want that to happen to you. So we want to make sure that your copyright information is in your images, right? Now, the best way to do that is to bake that information into your XF data at the time of capture. That's going into your camera settings, putting your information in there, and then every time you pull that trigger, that image is going to be baked with your information internally to it. So the other way to change this data is after the fact in post-production. Now what we're going to do today is we're going to use the metadata option in Aftershot Pro 3. So let's go take a look. Get a few images from this fashion shoot. Let me click on this image. Now on the right hand side, you'll see a tab that says metadata. When we click on that, you can see that it says creator, creator's address, city, country, email, so on and so forth. Now the only thing that you see filled in is Joseph Christina. Now if I was to do this properly, like I said before, I would have put this information, all of that information into the camera itself. So at the time of capture, it would have baked this information into the XF data of each image, but it didn't. That's okay. We're going to make the correction now. From this tab here, we're going to go and fill this in. Let's go and put city, West Palm Beach, country, USA, email address, joseph at jchristina.com, phone number 561 and 000, postal code 33414, state Florida, and website jchristina.com. So that's it. So now what we want to do is copy this information to all of the other images. So for example, if you were doing a wedding and you had 1500 or maybe 2000 images for the wedding, you can make the modifications to one image and then copy it across the entire gamut in just basically a split second. So let's click on the image that we just modified, then click on edit and then copy selective image settings. From here, let's click none and then only select IPTC as well as metadata and click OK. So what that did guys was only copy the IPTC data as well as the metadata. Now what we're going to do is take that and copy it to all other images. We can either click on the first image and then hold down shift and then click the last or what's even easier is to click command A. Now we're going to once again click edit and then come down to paste image settings and that is it. Every single image should now have that IPC data. So let's click on this image for example and there it is. Joseph Christina, West Palm Beach, USA, so on and so forth. So that's fantastic. So there's something else that I really like about Aftershot and that's the ability to create sets of data. So for example, if I'm a food photographer but I also do weddings and maybe I do portraits, well maybe I want different sets of data. Right now we have a set called photographer. Now if I go and click manage and then twirl down photographer, you can see the IPCC data that's baked into this. Creator, creator's address, city, state, and whatnot. Now if I wanted to, for example, add usage terms, I can come over here to IPTC usage terms and drag it over into the photographer area and you can see now I have the ability to add usage terms. Now what's really great about this is for example if you're a wedding photographer you can for example give the party the images and they'll be royalty free or we can say contact creator right? But if you were to let's say turn and burn a wedding and say I'm going to shoot your wedding and now 
I'm going to give you all of those images and you can do whatever you want with them. Then where it says usage terms, you can say, for example, principal by, and then let's say your party's name or license to for print and then the person's name. And this way Costco or any other printing house will know that that specific party has the right to print those images. So the bottom line here, guys, is you do not want orphan work. You wanna make sure that your copyright stays with your images in perpetuity. So this way, if there's ever a possibility of getting some royalties for a print down the road, you would be able to do so. And once again, you own those images. They don't end up public domain, and then anybody could profit from all of your hard work. So that's it, guys. I hope you enjoyed the content. As always, if you did, give me a thumbs up. I would really appreciate it. Don't forget to subscribe to the channel and head over to my website, jchristina.com, where you can find a lot of photography tools that I've invented for photographers just like you. That's it. I'm out of here for yet another vlog. We'll see you in the next one. Take care, guys.